Good afternoon. It's Monday, May 4th. I'm Les Solgrove with Via Group Realtors, and it's time for the Des Moines Real Estate Market Update for Week 18. I have a special guest today with me, uh, David Bell from Gershman Mortgage. And, uh, David's joining me this week to talk about mortgage forbearance and the unintended consequences to homeowners. Um, so let's kind of just get started here, David, if you want to... Uh, Maybe first of all, just explain a little bit about what forbearance is, and then kind of go into the details of you know what's the what's the dangers of it. Sure. Yeah. So a lot of people tend to believe uh, forbearance is the same thing as like a loan modification, and it, that's not what it is. Forbearance, if you actually look up what the word means, it means holding back, and that's what the lenders literally saying they will do for you. They are holding back the foreclosure process if you're not able to make the mortgage payments. So one of the biggest things that, that we've seen as mortgage lenders is that it almost came out like, hey, this is something super easy and everybody can do it. And the truth be told, if you're able to make your mortgage payment, you really, really should. A lot of people are not truly understanding the ramifications of this because of forbearance, you're not making your mortgage payments. You're not following along with the contract that you're specific specifically set up initially when you bought that house or you refinanced that house. And so what we're seeing now are that lenders are notating on people's credit reports that a forbearance had been requested or forbearance has been issued. And then subsequently what's happening is, is lenders are backing away from being able to do refinances or purchase transactions for that individual for a period of at least 12 months because it's going to have, an, whether it hurts their score or not, they're going to say, hey, they haven't been making their mortgage payment in the last 12 months. And they're going to say, All right, we're not going to do that. So David, the question a lot of people are asking is, do you have to make up those payments at the end of a set period of time all at once? Or can you add them to the end of the mortgage? And what's the difference in there? Yeah. So in fact, I looked up some of these things. And, and so a loan modification is actually where you change the terms of the existing loan by a lender. This is different than a forbearance. Typically what happens is the forbearance is you're not going to make a mortgage payment for let's say three to four months, but then you're required to pay that full amount at the end of it. If you're unable to pay the full amount, that's when they're coming back and saying, well, this is where we can possibly do a modification, tack it into the, the end of the, the loan. But it's, it's a step-by-step -step process. So then on the flip side of that, let's say you're planning on selling your home sometime later this summer and you've participated in a forbearance, how is that then really going to affect you being able to purchase it in the, in the future? Yeah, going back to what I was saying earlier, so you go and sell that house and that was on that particular mortgage, so you're like, hey, I'm free and clear, I can go and purchase a new house. Problem is, is that that new lender is going to have to pull a credit report if you're taking out a mortgage and they're going to see that you had a forbearance on that prior property and they're going to say, Hey, within the next 12 months, you're not able to, you're not able to purchase. So, so I guess that's my, I guess that's my question is a forbearance automatically a negative hit on your credit. Unless there's something that they change in the near future to make it to where it's not punitive as of right now, that's what we're seeing with lenders. We've, we've got numerous reports on this. I actually did a post on this last week and a handful of realtors actually shared that post and one person chimed in and said, hey, wait a second, uh, I'm an underwriter and I'll, I'll tell you that's not the case. And I, I'm like, I didn't wanna argue with the person, but I'm like, this is definitely the case. And it's not just like, I work for Gershman Mortgage. It's not just Gershman Mortgage doing this. I, I'm in communication with numerous lenders throughout the state, throughout the nation. And they're all seeing the same thing. Forbearance is not just a quick and easy thing. And it's not something that does not have ramifications. It can definitely be punitive. So, so you had mentioned um, restructuring your, your mortgage. Is that the basically the best option then? Or is it just still a better option just to reach out to your lender and say, hey, I'm having, I'm struggling. I don't want to screw up my credit. What can I do? So that's always the, the best course of action is reaching out to the lender and communicating and letting them know because the forbearance may not be necessary. It could be just, a, a, I guess the way I would put it is it only go to that as a kind of a last resort. 
Uh, there are other things. Now, granted, a loan modification is going to hurt you as well. Anytime you're not making your mortgage payments as previously designed, you're going to have an issue uh, later down the line. And just um, will one hurt you more or the other? Well, if you go late on a mortgage payment, let's say you don't do forbearance, but you just went late. Well, now you're 30 days late on your mortgage, and that's going to adversely affect you. You do more than one uh, of those. Now you have two. And according to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac guidelines, you can usually get away with a one times 30 on a mortgage late as long as your credit uh, was strong enough in the first place. The problem is, is when you exceed that too, you're not able to proceed with a conventional loan. Even if you still had, let's say, pretty decent credit, they're going to see that and it's automatically going to be set that you can't proceed forward. So it's kind of a domino <laughs> effect, essentially, and, and you got to be careful. Of, so, all right. Um, well, can you uh, stick with us here for a few minutes, David? I've only got about 10 or 15 minutes on my part. And um, if somebody has any questions, I'd like to ask them to uh, post them in the chat uh, or even press your space bar and we'll and start asking the questions. But uh, David, anything else you want to say before we kind of move on here? Again, just look at forbearance as a last resort because it will have ramifications at this stage of the game. Very good. Well, thank you for uh, joining me today, and I put you on the spot with some kind of repetitive questions, but, uh, you know, sometimes it takes three or four times to hear these things uh, before they kind of sink in. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put you on mute so we can uh, kind of move forward here, and uh, we'll ask at the very end if anybody has any questions. So um, this is David's uh, webpage, Gershman Mortgage, or Gershman.com, and you can either search him for the for his uh, particular part of the website and then his phone number and email is here as well. But thanks again for coming, David. So, All right, so uh, to move over to the stat side, uh, the end of the month happened this past week, end of April, and I did release my month end market statistics. And the quickest and easiest way for you to find those is at blog.simplydemoine.com. And from there, it'll take you to this uh, presentation that you can navigate through uh, at your own pace. Uh, you don't have to follow a certain path. You just click on the topic that you have interest on. And I have added a COVID-19 market effects button, which is basically some of my weekly stats that I've put out as well. And so um, you can kind of navigate through those and kind of just see what's happening in the marketplace. The LOs here are basically what I've reported every month. Uh, previous and then how the COVID-19 is affecting our marketplace. But that's available again at blog.simplydemoine.com. And uh, this is just one graphic that happens to be in the monthly report. And I bring it up because I'm going to talk today uh, briefly about months of inventory. And uh, one of the things you can kind of see here at the end of April, this is a, a graphic of, of three different color bars. The, the yellow bars indicate a seller's market. That's where the sellers are in control. There's low inventory and high amount of buyers. The blue is our even market, which in our area, uh, I describe that as four to six months of inventory. And you can see that actually uh, the 900 to a million dollar price point actually dipped into that even market. Now in its defense, there's uh, fewer listings in that price point. So you'll see some higher fluctuations up there, but um, it was kind of a, you know, if you were a buyer in that price point, you had a better ch than not chance of kind of finding what you wanted without um, uh, tripping over too many of the buyers there. So, of course, the above million dollar price point is always going to be kind of our slowest moving part of the market up there. But um, that doesn't mean there can't be some deals up there. So that's a, the red is the buyer's market. So this is the end of April uh, reports. It's kind of a snapshot as of the end of April. But if you want to kind of look at where we're at months of inventory year to date, this green line now represents all properties that are currently uh, for sale um, in our marketplace. And overall, we're at the end of uh, last Sunday, we were at two and a half months of inventory over here on the right. And you can see it around that first part of March when COVID-19 kind of hit our marketplace, we were at 2.6 months. So we're, we're kind of where we were back at that point. So I, I talked this week about kind of a little bit of a leveling happening in our marketplace. And this is kind of where we're at. We're kind of leveling, I would say in a typical market. In fact, um, we would, we'd actually be going down farther. Um, 
this graphic is what I affectionately call the spaghetti graph. And it can look a little uh, undotting here, but it's along that same premise of months of inventory. And it's broken down by our four property categories that we traditionally sell in. We have single family resale, condo townhome resale, and that's indicated by these bottom two lines. Single family new construction, which is in the gray kind of hovering in the middle there. And then new construction condo townhome at the top. And this one, we always talk about how wild it is. It's because there's just more inventory in the condo townhome uh, marketplace than we have buyers for. And you can kind of see it fluctuates. Uh, we're currently 11, just, just under a year's worth of supply of inventory. So um, probably won't see a lot of new construction building in that area because there's obviously already enough inventory to satisfy the buyer appetite. The, uh, the middle graphic here, the new construction single family, is hovering right around that middle of the road, you know, just between four and six months of inventory, which is perfect for a buyer. Uh, gives you the opportunity to kind of shop a little bit. Um, you can slow down and make your decision within two or three days versus overnight, which you're kind of having to make down here in this bottom. Um, the two bottom categories are both resale properties. So a resale condo and resale single family. And the single family as of last Sunday was actually that particular category itself was down under two months of inventory, which is a real strong indicator that the buyers, regardless of what's going on in our marketplace with COVID-19, the buyers are there. And um, same thing for the condo townhomes, but really the single family resale market is really, really active right now. And all we really need is uh, some sellers to kind of come on the market. Back on the market was a number we've been kind of tracking and it changed differently than kind of expected this week. So I went ahead and brought it back for this week's review. Last week we were at 24% of all homes kind of came back on the market and that's the purple line. The orange line represents where we were last year. So you can kind of see a year over year valuation or number of uh, back on the markets percentage wise. And we ticked up just slightly. Now that could be um, just that the more buyer activity is coming out there. I know I've been showing homes this week and, you know, if you're not the first in the door making an offer, there's multiple offers going. So the more you have multiple offers happening, the higher chances that uh, someone might, uh, you know, the home may not make the home inspection or a buyer might have, um, you know, buyer's remorse quickly, quickly or something to that effect. So, it's not unexpected to see this bubble just up a little bit, but at 25%, it still is um, a higher number than we were last year. So right now, as of last Sunday, one in four homes were falling, um, basically falling, the sales were falling apart and coming back on the market. So good news if you're a buyer and you missed out on that house, it just tells you to keep an eye on those houses that you maybe missed out on because you have a one in four chance, at least last week, of, of um, maybe having a second chance at it. The home for sale inventory level, uh, again, we, we like to see this kind of start to rise as we get into the spring market, as home sellers come on the market. And what you're seeing is really we're seeing this kind of take a little bit of a, a decrease, which all that really means, you'll see in the next graphic here when we talk about pendings, is that the buyers are coming out and they're really, they're, they're eating at such a fast pace. They're eating the market uh, up that they're actually, you know, keeping the inventory from rising. And so to see where we really should be as of last year, we should be already into about a full month of inventory rise as sellers do start to enter the market. And um, we're just not seeing that rise. Again, not because they aren't coming on the market, it's just because the buyers are out there um, going under pending quicker. So I do expect this number to start to rise here uh, in May, especially as the governor starts to release uh, you know, more counties uh, back into kind of uh, normal status. Um, you know, 77 counties opened last week and Polk County and Dallas County were not one of them. So boy, we, you watch out the day we are kind of told that we can kind of start to go back to this. Uh, we're gonna see some big jumps here. This is the pending sales, the daily pending sales. And again, you can see the, where we had our little slowdown in March into April but it's been on the on the upturn again. And just with the, you know, we do occasionally see a little dip in sales. Um, I'm not concerned when I see this in the period of three or four days, because I'm going to expect 
this sale pending number to continue to rise. But what it kind of tells me is, is that our marketplace is kind of finding its own level. Um, you know, if you think about pushing a bowl into a um, empty bowl into a, a tub of water and you push down, you get that resistance from the water pushing back up. And if you let go, the, the bowl doesn't jump all the way out. It kind of settles. And that's kind of what I feel like our market is doing. It's finding its own level. And then as long as we don't have, again, I said this earlier this year, if we don't have any kind of outside influence on our marketplace, we should be able to reestablish that level and kind of pick back up. So does that mean we're going to, um, you know, surpass the, the, the pending sale counts as of last year? It's very possible just because we have this pent up demand. Um, but uh, I would, we'll just kind of watch this and we'll kind of get an idea of where our market peak is. Our market peak is typically around that June 1st date. And I suspect it's gonna be around July, maybe mid July, you know, 30 to 45 days later this year. So weekly open house counts. Here's another good sign of our marketplace. Again, here, week 11 is where we kind of saw the, the drop off on week 12. Uh, the, the blue line or the blue indication is resale properties being held open, of course, Easter on week 15. Um, but week 18 here, we went back up above 500 homes uh, in open house this last weekend. 102 of those were uh, single family resale properties, so, or Canto Town Home, the resale properties. And so it tells me that sellers are starting to feel a little bit more comfortable letting home buyers in. I know there's been some special um, ways of letting people in, either measured in or you know uh, by appointments only. But um, this is a good sign to see the open house count start to pick back up again. And you can see year over year, we have a little ways to go before we kind of catch back up to last year's numbers. So. Um, really, I'm not sure we're going to see us catch back up to these numbers really, really fast. It, it's, anything's possible, but we'll see what we can do here. So, last graphic again is I always end with the uh, weekly dashboard and kind of seeing where our weekly new listings were coming on. We had 306 new homes come into the marketplace last week, and 274 of those went into sell pending. Of course, we lost some into. Um, uh, that back on market group, but uh, we're eating up again, almost every new home that comes on the market, we're displacing that with a, uh, with a pending sale. So good news there. I, I think that just says we're still, we're still building, we're still gaining strength. Um, the, the pending sales, we didn't surpass the week before we had a little slow down, but, and that was kind of shown in that, that pending graphic where it had a little bit of a dip, but I guarantee you, Realtors out there are not feeling that dip at all, and neither are home buyers. They're they're experiencing full onslaught, what feels like in a full onslaught of a spring real estate market. So we need the more listings. Uh, that's going to just help us return to our more set of normalcy, or what I call the really our pivot this year. We're trying to kind of pivoting, and um, so you know, open houses are back to 80, 80% new construction, 20% resale. We usually are about 60, 40. So that's kind of it, I guess, for this week. Next week, we're going to be back on Monday again, and then we'll go back to our full Tuesdays every Tuesday at noon. But next week, May 11th, it'll be at noon. And I uh, sure hope to see you guys back here. It'll be the same link that you used to join today. And you can always find all the stats that I produce over here at uh, my Facebook pages, both Simply Des Moines Stats, if all you want are the stats, or you can go over to my actual Simply Des Moines business page if you want all the other stuff. But um, this is, these are your resources. So um, anybody have any questions? Rob Spearman, thanks again. I appreciate you. You're a great uh, cheerleader for me. Um, if anybody has any questions, just um, unmute yourself and ask away. We've got David still here for a second. And my goal is to be out of here within 15, 20 minutes. Tiffany left a message. Thanks. Very good. I appreciate it. All right. We'll see no questions. Guys, thanks again this week. We'll see you next Monday at 12 o'clock noon. Tell your friends, tell your friends, friends, let's build this up and kind of keep track of what's going on in the real estate market. David Bell, unmute you here real quick. Thank you again for joining me today. Any last words of wisdom? So I just love the fact that you, you get out there and you get the education out to folks. And I, I appreciate that greatly. You've always been a great mentor and 
an educator. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thanks for thanks for joining me today. Uh, your your check is in the mail. So, all right, all right. Well, that's it, guys. We'll see you next week. Have a good week and be safe out there.